He's asking for your vote again. But has he earned it? Chief political correspondent Emma Withrow has his political report card. More specifically, Republican Congressman Ted Budd is serving his third term in the House of Representatives, but is still considered a newbie on Capitol Hill. Thank you. Unlike most members of Congress, Budd never held public office prior to winning North Carolina's 13th seat, which stretches from the northern suburbs of Charlotte all the way to Greensboro. I don't think as a politician, I think as a small business person, um, I think as uh, I, I live in a farming community, I don't call myself a farmer, but um, I have an agricultural background. Bud grew up on a 300-acre farm in Davie County, North Carolina. He owns a gun store and has coined himself a political outsider. You can't be bought by the swamp, and I don't give a rip about their Washington games. There were 17 candidates for the seat that opened up when the old 13th district merged with the 2nd district. A federal court ruling about racial gerrymandering forced a do-over primary. Bud, then a newcomer, beat out seasoned politicians. And so I don't think as an insider, I'm not naturally trying to advance a career here, whether on committee. I just like the idea of serving others, and uh, the Senate is an opportunity to do that. Now Bud's making a bid for Richard Burr's Senate seat, which is opening up in 2022. There are already some big Republican names in the race, but Bud secured the endorsement from Donald Trump. Mr. President, Laura, this means the world to me. Thank you. It's tough work. It's grueling. Um, but also it's rewarding in the sense that I, I'm a fit for those in the district and I think that I'm a fit for those in North Carolina. But talking the talk is a lot different than walking the walk. Does Bud actually address his constituents' concerns? If it's something as simple as renewing a passport. Or one case that I'm reminded of is just a week or two ago is a veteran's uh, paperwork had been misfiled at the VA and he was ineligible for uh, a veteran's loan for his home and was about to lose his home. But we were able to locate that, get it resolved, and uh, he was able to stay in his home. Bud is ranked fourth most politically conservative compared to the rest of House members, according to GovTrack. But he still managed to reach across the aisle and has co-sponsored more than 130 bills written by Democrats. I can reach across the aisle when it makes uh, political sense uh, and economic and uh, military sense, and it just makes our country stronger. Uh, uh, in it. So we're, those are the things we're going to reach across the aisle on. Now, as far as his own legislation, Bud said being in the minority makes it difficult. He sponsored 102 bills, but none of them were signed into law, even though for one of those Congresses, he was in the majority. But Bud's role in Congress doesn't just stop in the chamber. Because I'm on the Financial Services Committee. Which influences the financial sector across the country. It's especially pertinent for Charlotte, one of the biggest banking hubs in the nation. I think there's been a lot of uh, fiscal irresponsibility when it comes to this administration, and it's just made it harder on the district. Bud promised to fight for fiscal responsibility, but has he remained consistent with that goal? When you take so much money and you pump it into the economy uh, without being productive. Build Back Better is fully paid for. And then you encourage people to stay at home through various plans. You get a lower labor participation, and you get too much money chasing too few goods. And there's shortages, and it bids the price up. That's a recipe for inflation. The bill that better bill is passed. Bud opposed the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill, despite both North Carolina Republican Senators Tom Tillis and Richard Burr voting for it. We got a lot of hard work ahead. Now Bud promises to put his main focus on his district, despite being the front runner in one of the biggest Senate races in decades. I asked Congressman Bud a question. What grade would you give yourself based off your performance thus far in Congress? And he said the voters are going to be providing that after the North Carolina Senate election votes are counted. Coming up next Tuesday night, I'll be serving up another midterm report card for South Carolina's 4th Congressional District. I'll let you know if Congressman William Timmons is following through with his promises he made up in Washington. But for now in the studio, Emma Withrow, Fox 46.